Greetings, opera lovers. It's Rona from Pittsburgh. I've just returned from my local theater where I saw a live transmission of Verdi's Rigoletto, one of my very favorite operas, also an opera that I've seen probably tied for first with Madama Butterfly. I know this opera quite well in terms of tunes, what the characters stand for, and quite a bit about its history. And as most of you know who are watching this review, this production is set in Las Vegas in 1960. At first I wasn't going to go because I really wasn't interested in this, but many people told me it was really good. So I decided to go. But before I went, I saw a few little clips that the Met put out to entice you to go. In one of them, Diana Damrau, who sings Gilda, is wearing an absolutely hideous dress that is cut very, very low. And as she's a new mom, her breasts are overly prominent and it's very distracting. But that was the preview. Now we get to today's performance. This was such a nothing thing that I decided to make myself two little lists. The top 10 things that made this Rigoletto good, the top 10 things that made it bad, and then some of the things that are in between. So you will have to forgive me. I need my glasses. So, I made a list, see? Oh, well, I'm not really good at this, so I'm just going to read them out loud. The top 10 things about Regoletto today. Number one, Piotr Bekchawa, as Rene Fleming pronounced his name. He's great. He sings the role of the Duke perfectly. You couldn't ask for anything more. His style, his voice, his ease, his manner, his acting, everything about him, his swagger. Number two, Piotr's mouth. I know this is strange. I'm a singer and I love to watch singers. I love to see what they do. He has the most beautiful mouth the way he forms his vowels, the way he uses his lips. It's just wonderful to see. Number three, I liked the concept of updating Rigoletto. We'll get to how that concept worked out. Number four, during an intermission feature, Diana Damrau's son made an appearance, a big highlight. Number five, during another intermission, Rene Fleming interviews Jonas Kaufmann and Katarina Dalaiman, who had just finished singing Parsifal a few hours ago. Number six, Jonas Kaufmann. Well, he just deserves a place by himself. Number seven, they actually let Katarina speak. For a while, it looked like it was going to be an interview with Jonas Kaufmann and Katarina Dalaiman standing next to him. Number eight, they showed you a scene from Parsifal. Number nine and ten were not filled in. You'll never guess why. The ten worst things about the opera were, one, Diana's dress. Was this designed by blind people? It was the ugliest dress I have ever seen. It looked horrible on her. She's a lovely looking person she deserved to have a nice dress. Did she not glance down and absolutely demand to have a new costume? Diana, speak up. Number two, the chic. What was this? Number three, the concept of tutti. You know, that's where the orchestra and the singers are supposed to be together. Not in evidence enough from a production of, from, from the Met. Four, inconsistent subtitles. Okay, it's cute to say, hey, baby, where are you going, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, I've got a girl, let's take a whirl. But they don't do it consistently. So either do it that way or don't do it that way. But don't do it sometimes. Every singer had a different style of singing. Nobody went together. So we had Piotr Beccawa singing in the grand Italian style with abandon. 
Diana Damro singing in her pristine German style. Then we had somebody who had great reviews, Stefan Kochan, from another, from another opera. And then we had Zelko Luchik, who sang Rigoletto. He also had a different style of singing. Number six, I didn't care about one character except for the Duke. We're not supposed to have sympathy for the Duke. We're not supposed to like him. I didn't care about anybody. During the first act duet between um, Gilda and her father, Diana Damrau, she had to do the acting for both of them to show the tenderness between them. She did a great job. Number seven, vibratos are nice, but wobbles are not. I'm not going to mention any names, but Stefan Kochan got excellent reviews, and I disagreed. Okay. Did they really have a director? Number eight, was there really a director for this show? Everything was all over the map. Number nine, carrying this concept through. It was a good concept, but they didn't carry it through. Act two is a mess. And it's got all that great music from Verity. What a shame. And number 10 is something that I'd like to call between the stage and you or across the footlights. There has to be something that draws you to watch the opera and feel invested. I felt everybody was just going through the steps. I'd like to say a few extra words about Miss Damrau, a singer I greatly admire. I've loved her since I saw those first clips of her singing on YouTube, The Queen of the Night. She owned it. She's a very good actress but she was not well directed here. I felt she was just all mannerisms. However, her singing of Karanome and in general her technique was so pristine and so quiet. She let everything come out just the right way. It was really beautiful and for that reason it made the opera even so much more disappointing to me. So that's generally it. I was really disappointed. I went wanting to like it. In terms of the sets, I actually thought the set in the last act was kind of more interesting and drew me in, whereas the set in the first act was so garish that it just it was so sleazy. It made my skin crawl. I know I'm not supposed to like it, but when, that's, when all you can um, concentrate on is how awful Rigoletto's sweater is and how they talk about his hunchback and his limp and he, he didn't have a hunchback and he didn't have a limp. I don't know. What opera was I seeing? And, and the really worst part about uh, this Rigoletto was I didn't feel sympathy or sorrow for him. I felt nothing. And he sang a little flat, too. So not a good day at the opera. However, I have to say that last night the Met put on Parsifal. Only five hours and 45 minutes or so of, uh, of them being on the stage. And as it ended, when I turned off my computer, it was a quarter of 12. Trust me, nobody got out of that building who was performing before 12. And now the men in the chorus, the orchestra members, they have to come for a Saturday matinee. Maybe not everybody, but many. So maybe that's what drained them. Maybe that's why uh, the opera lacked so much cohesiveness and energy. I didn't care for it. In contrast, when I saw Maria Stuarda, I always want to call it Maria Stuarda, when I saw Maria Stuarda, an opera I don't even love. Everything came together. All the singers had the same style. The sets and the costumes made it a oneness. The acting was fabulous. Now we have this, a mishmash. The guy who directed it, Michael Mayer, is from Broadway. Surprise. Okay, in two weeks, we get Parsifal. I cannot wait. You know what? I don't care what the production looks like. I know I'm going to love it. Bye.